So, uh, Justice, um, first question. Is there anything going on at the court these days? <laughs> <laughs> when you go back to Washington, could you tell your colleagues that uh, next time they leak an opinion, could they just give it to me and I'll leak it for them? <laughs> Why are they going through these other methods? Uh, you have too much character to leak. Um, but in seriousness, Justice, uh, you know, one theme that's come out of this conference, I think, is the importance of institutions. Yeah. And that institutions are under attack these days. Um, so I thought you might want to comment on the leaks, the protests at justices' homes, and what we're seeing in the wake of this leak of the alleged Dobbs draft opinion. Well, I've, uh, first of all, it's um, a real honor to be here. This is, it's hard to believe that 40, more than 40 years have passed since, um, I um, was at Fairmont Conference, which was, I was just <clears throat> no more enthusiastic about that than I am about this one. Um, and I think it started off with, um, I thought, a um, very electric speech by Glenn Lowry, and it has continued with the thoughtfulness. And that's really all we ever wanted, um, not to, replace one orthodoxy with another orthodoxy. We had enough of that. But rather to assume that people are able to think for themselves, to have different ideas because they're unique, uh, to exchange different perspectives and perhaps have others uh, either agree with them or sharpen their disagreements, uh, but to have a civil discussion. That was all, that's why it was called uh, New Alternatives. Uh, it was an alternative to, uh, it's the kind of alternatives you would want in a, uh, a, what we thought at least in a civil society. And um, it certainly was, uh, did not, was not treated that way. And that sort of, we were treated very shabbily after that. Uh, the, the whole idea, to your point about um, institutions, I think we are in danger of destroying the institutions that are required for a free society. Uh, you can't have a, a, a civil society, a free society, without a stable legal system. Uh, you can't have one without stability in things like property or um, interpretation and impartial judiciary. Um, and I've been at, in this business long enough to know just how fragile it is. And the institution that I'm a part of, uh, if someone said that one line of one opinion would be leaked by anyone and you would say, that, oh, that's impossible. No one would ever do that. There was such a a uh, belief in the rule of law, a belief in the court, a belief in what we were doing, that that was verboten. It was beyond anyone's understanding, or at least anyone's uh, imagination, that it, someone would do that. And look where we are, where now that trust or that belief is gone forever. Um, the, and when you lose that trust, especially in the institution that I'm in, uh, it changes the institution fundamentally. Uh, you begin to look over your shoulder. It's like kind of an infidelity uh, that you can explain it, but you can't undo it. And, um, the, and I think you're seeing it go through any number of our institutions, whether it's in the political branches or whether it's in the universities. When I went to a university, to college, it was the fun place where you were not that well informed, but boy, you debated all night. And then the people with whom you just argued. Like, just like the Supreme Court. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, the, so the, but the friends that you made during that time, you kept for life. You, uh, you, and you pick up the arguments 10 years later and you're still arguing and you're still loving being around each other. You remember the bad pizza and uh, too many uh, mugs of beer and uh, a reason why many of us don't drink anymore. 
But it, my point is simply that, that even the universities have changed. I was at the University of Georgia uh, about a year ago, and I met with a lot of students. And their question was, why can't we in the general society debate difficult things anymore? And I said to them, and these were small groups, I met with a group of 10 students, uh, 15 separate groups for about an hour. It was very uh, exhausting, but enormously, enormously informative. And the, um, the, you know, I said to them that, to me, the epicenter of free speech when I was in, it was at the university. That's where you learn how to, to, to engage with people who disagreed with you. That's where you learned how to deal with ideas and address ideas that you had not, you were not, with which you were not familiar previously or with which you disagreed. And it was back and forth, and I just loved it. And, and, and we called them rap sessions back then. And they said, I said, but now look at your university. We're at the, this is the University of Georgia. I said, how many of you can take a view on this campus of traditional families? And of course, nobody. Oh, you got a lot of people staring at the floor. How many of you can take a pro-life position on this campus? Staring at the floor. And as you go on and on, uh, you take positions that are obviously at odds with the current mood on these campuses. Now, this is, a, this is where you learn how to deal with views that are different. Now, if you don't learn at that point, the law schools are just as bad now. At John's alma mater, Yale, uh, the, um, they just... <laughs> Did you give your degree back again? <laughs> uh, Yale does not recognize me. <laughs> me either. They, they, okay. Oh, so we're in the same boat. <laughs> but um, they just protested uh, a group. Uh, and made it very difficult for others to come and certainly had a chilling effect. Now, Yale was, when I was there, visiting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was anything goes. As you do your thing, I do my thing. And maybe too much of that, but it certainly wasn't prior restraint. And it certainly wasn't censorship. But here we are, where that's acceptable at one of the elite universities, it's, and it's pretty much acceptable at all the universities. And if, they, if we're there with these institutions, how do we recover? So yeah, I do think that the, the, what happened at the court is tremendously bad. I think it's, um, I wonder how long we're going to have uh, these institutions at the rate we're undermining them. And uh, then I wonder when they're gone or they are destabilized, what we will have as a country. And I don't think that the prospects are good if, uh, if we continue to lose them. Thank you. Well, I know you can't speak much more about the court, so uh, maybe we could start.